Oh my god, are you okay, Janus? Are you hit? Okay, great. Okay, I'm gonna break from cover and charge the enemy. I just have to hit the A button. Wish me luck. Oh God, why does the A button do everything in this game? Oh, I hit the backstory option? It's insane. When the days were long, I would sit at the pier waiting for my dad to come home. Oh my god. Get me out of here! What is going on with this fish thing? When it comes to storytelling, video games are still an emerging genre compared to fiction writing or screenplays which have existed for such a long time. But video games can bring an aspect of interaction that other forms of media simply cannot. In the current day, large AAA video games can have scripts that are in the thousands of pages. Grand Theft Auto V boasted a script that was allegedly 3,500 pages. Red Dead Redemption 2, another Rockstar game that I would argue creates the most in-depth and realistic world in all of video games, claimed to have a script of 2,000 pages, reaching almost eight feet high. Some of the most recent successes of video game storytelling uh, is Baldur's Gate 3, which me and my wife played through in the past year. This game boasts over 1,800 characters that speak and a script that is nearly 115,000 lines of dialogue. And these are just the Herculean efforts, some of the recent greats of video games. But video game storytelling would be nothing without so many of the indie game greats that build incredible stories without needing 115,000 lines of dialogue. Games like Doki Doki Literature Club craft a story experience that simply cannot be recreated through other mediums. Other games like Undertale are built around providing the player options for how the story should be experienced. Video games are interactive. You impact the story. Games like Life is Strange or Detroit Become Human are built on this concept, and there's so many other great games. Some games like Journey are filled with story with little to no dialogue. What are some of the great stories found in video games? I would love to do a video on a deep dive into unique or powerful or emotional stories found in video games. Let me know below. What makes video games so unique is that there is an element of storytelling that happens without the developers creating it. Emergent storytelling. The idea that the mechanics and the gameplay provides a way for the player to create their own storytelling moments. And this is something that is just completely unique to interactive art like video games. Games like Dwarf Fortress where everything is simulated and you just do your best to help a group of hardy dwarves survive. There's no scripted story, just the moments that emerge while you play and you experience something totally unique. A soul dwarf, the last of the colony, fighting off a demon who's crawled up from the depths below your fortress, or two dwarves that fell in love and created a masterpiece of art that is now drawing people from all over the world to come and witness the beauty of the statue they created. Video games, are a different medium than writing, of course. But there are still some incredible takeaways that we can get from video games and apply it to our own storytelling. By the way, I won't be spoiling much. No spoilers for recent games, but I will spoil some details from these old games. Character roles and depth. 
When a video game can take nearly 100 hours or more to complete, then the characters around you must be interesting. They must be unique and for the love of God, not annoying. <laughs> That's a oh. You're serious. A lot of thought is put into these characters to make sure that they add to the player's enjoyment of the game. And the way that game designers do this is really important. The characters around you must be distinct from each other. If you have characters that feel too similar, then both characters feel less important because they share that same role. In the stories that you write, you need to make sure that your characters each fill a unique role. <laughs> And this doesn't mean that your characters need to fit squarely in the square peg. They don't need to be cookie cutter characters. When I say that they have to have a unique role, I mean this. If you have a character in your story that plays the role of the best friend that keeps your main character grounded. I couldn't do this without you, Garrus. Sure you could. Not as stylishly, of course. Don't then introduce another character that attempts to do the same thing. That role is already filled. Your other characters should stand opposite or adjacent to that character. The years I've grown used to the smell of burning bodies. That's probably a bad sign. Anyone else hungry? Introduce a character that urges your main hero to change or to take on the responsibilities that they're hesitant to. Create that dynamic between characters that causes tension and conflict. You're joking, right? A five-year-old could answer that question. Do you not know more than a child? I care nothing for your religion. Pow! Oh! Or if the entire theme of your story is about staying grounded while hell breaks loose around you, then introduce other characters that support your character from different perspectives. In games like Baldur's Gate, each character chimes in with their opinion of what you should do. Do we save this village of druids or do we turn away and focus on more important things? Do we save this village only if they reward us for it? or out of the goodness of our hearts. Each character in Baldur's Gate makes their opinion heard. And in the video game world, side characters that you really like may influence the decisions that you make because you trust them and you want them to like you. Please don't open the creepy book. Maybe your main character in your story suffers from those same desires. To make these side characters feel realistic, Games spend a lot of time expanding on the backstory of who these characters are. It explains the reason they act one way or another, or extrapolates on the theme of that character. Mass Effect 2 was a game that forever had an impact on me, and it was the first time that I really felt attached to the side characters around me. I still remember the dilemmas of Morden Solus and the Krogan Grunt. Morden, a scientist, that helped create a genocidal virus to eradicate the Krogan. Shocking suggestion. Creates a dynamic between them that's unlike any other. Morden's regret at this past action plays a vital part in his character journey, driving him to make decisions to rectify the virus that go against his own self-preservation. If you know, you know. I'm not. Had to be me. Each character that is showcased in your story should have the same level of thought and detail. Even if you choose not to fully explore the backstory of your characters in your writing, you need to put thought and effort into figuring out their past purely for your own sake of writing fully developed characters. Why do they act a certain way or hold certain prejudices or certain fears? These kind of intrinsic qualities make characters feel real and deep. Now how you tease out those details in your story is up to you. Takeaway. Develop unique characters that fill unique roles around your main character. Avoid creating characters that overlap each other in purpose or personality. Character growth. One of the most important things in your story is the character flip. I talk about it more in this video, along with providing a framework to help you do it. The character flip is the difference between your characters at the beginning of the story and at the end of the story and it's the lessons that they've learned and the fears that they've overcame. A story without some kind of character growth can feel unsatisfying or like something is still missing. In video games, this could be done with the main character or the side characters, though usually the biggest change comes in the form of the side characters. The main characters of so many stories are designed to be sympathetic and likable from the get-go, 
while side characters may be more abrasive until you spend time to get to know them. Oh, that's grotesque. Don't stare. You'll only encourage it. Main characters are kind of a tough talking point within video games because so many games want you to be the character. They want you to make the choices so they don't give the main character very distinctive voices so that you can insert your own. Side characters are a better analogy of what you may experience within your own story writing. Great character flips in these games might be Morgan or Alistair in Dragon Age Origins. Morgan joins your party against her wishes, pushed by her mother. She's sarcastic and selfish. She's an independent woman who is really abrasive to be around. Time for you to go then. Do not be ridiculous, girl. These are your guests. Oh, very well. But by the end of the game, she's willing to make the ultimate sacrifice to try to save your life or the lives of your companions. Alistair is an idealistic, optimistic, jovial companion that by the end of the game learns that he is the proper heir to the throne and must take a more serious and practical approach to life. Watch as I thrash our enemies with the mighty power of floral arrangements. Feel my thorns, dark spawn. And seeing this change in a character that is your earliest friend in this game is pretty shocking. His joking nature, optimistic outlook on life, it all changes. That personality that you've grown to love is noticeably different. And maybe one of the most important things to making the character flip work within your writing is to give time for the reader to understand the differences in this character. A moment where they would have clearly responded a certain way before, now they handle that moment differently. Because of the pace and the freedom that games give you, characters in a video game may go through their flip while there's still a dozen hours of game time left. And this kind of pacing gives you plenty of time to see, appreciate, and adjust to that changed personality. Takeaway, focus on the character flip and give the reader time to appreciate the change. Check out the character flip framework to see more on that. Raised stakes. If there's one thing that video games do right, it's increasing the stakes. How many fantasy RPGs have you started by killing rats in someone's basement and then fighting a dragon, a god, or a dragon god by the end of the game? How many shooters give you a dinky little pistol at the beginning of the game and have you shooting lasers and rocket launchers by the end? This sort of raising of stakes is the bread and butter of video games, and there's so many examples of this to choose from. The real question is, how do you apply this to your writing? First things first, not every story needs to conclude with you saving the world. Raised stakes doesn't always mean that it needs to be that grand. Raised stakes can lead to the end of a story where someone is trying to save their marriage, or you can go Goonies style and just try to keep your family together. Raised stakes should mean that you feel something is at risk. Maybe more important, is that you're able to convince the audience that this at-risk thing is truly important. Ever heard of a MacGuffin? It's the idea that you have something in your story that the characters claim is important to them, and it helps drive the actions of the characters, but it's not really important to the audience. The thing that the characters on the screen worry about, but the audience don't care. Community has a great bit on this in their episode making fun of Glee Club and Pitch Perfect, and how important it is that they make it to regionals. Let's stop regionals! What the hell are regionals? They never stop talking about it. Big fan. Raised stakes in storytelling should make sense. There should be a gradual timeline that shows the increase of tension and conflict and consequences. And games do this through a couple different methods. The natural storytelling and interactions of video games provide you with harder and harder challenges to overcome. And this leads to your skills developing or your character leveling up or some kind of progress. And by always teasing that challenge in front of you, the stakes are slowly raised as you complete each challenge. The climax should be the culmination of all of those previous challenges. The lessons that you learned through earlier challenges should return and help the character make it through the final challenge. In your story, your characters should face similar hurdles to overcome. It doesn't always have to be as drastic as games like Halo or Baldur's Gate, but it should cause your characters to feel overwhelmed and desperate at points. 
As they overcome those challenges, they become more confident in their abilities. Takeaway. Each challenge that your characters face should gradually increase in tension, consequences, and effort. Everything should culminate in the character's biggest challenge yet. Have the lessons your characters learned in previous challenges return during the climax. Fun and games. The best part of any video game, in my opinion, are the moments between the big story. We'll get to the side quests in a bit, but I wanna talk about the part of your story that multiple plot frameworks refer to as fun and games. As a storyteller, you've created an entire world and populated that world with characters and events and histories and qualities to explore. It would be a shame if every moment of your story focused on the big quest and you never gave the reader time to see why this world is interesting and unique. Fun and Games is the part of your story where you get to provide this experience to the reader. This is the moment in Baldur's Gate where you enter the carnival to meet all the wild characters manning booths and games nearby. This is the moment where in Mass Effect 3, you compete against Garrus, Garrus? I can't remember who, how to say it, in a shooting contest, and you can choose to let him win and he brags about it for the rest of the game. Let's find out who's really the best shot. These are some of the moments that just are absolutely fantastic character building between the moments of conflict and tension. And this can be hard to make sure you don't overdo it. Many editors and plot frameworks and writing advice would say that if this part of your story doesn't immediately serve the plot, then you should cut it. But maybe you should take these moments as they are. If done right, these moments are some of the most memorable character development in your story. Takeaway, embrace the moments between tension to explore your world, develop great character moments, and allow the reader and yourself to have fun. Side quests. Most story-driven video games have a focus on the big story, but they also have additional stories, side quests, and missions to slow the character down and showcase other smaller moments. This gives the player the chance to experience different styles of storytelling than just the main quest. Arguably, more difficult than a video game telling one big story is a video game telling dozens of smaller, different stories and doing it well. This may be the biggest piece of advice I can give you when it comes to writing your stories. If you are writing a novel, allow yourself to turn one big story into a couple smaller connected stories. There are a few reasons to do this. The first is just fatigue. That's bad. It can be exhausting if every moment of a story is about defeating the big bad boss to save the world. The second is variety, it's the spice of life. It also allows you, the author, to explore your own storytelling skills. Pairing side quests with your character journeys and character flips is a great combination. In Baldur's Gate 3, we have a bunch of revenge stories with the side characters. And that's an easy and satisfying enough character journey in a video game, especially because there's like a definite conclusion. When a character gets revenge for what's happened to them, we feel like that journey is complete, right? And in a video game context, this usually wraps up with some big battle. In our writing, a story should be made up of a bunch of steps towards a larger goal. I actually have a video here on story arcs that explores this. Check it out. It is satisfying to the reader when these smaller journeys are introduced and completed on the way to a larger conflict. It lets the reader experience bits of resolution and progress while we struggle with a larger, more complicated issue. Consider the side quests in the all-time great game Fable and all of its sequels. Fable surrounds itself with side quests somewhere in the form of protecting a farm from bandits to chasing chickens. Chicken chaser, do you chase chickens? To curing balverines. You went to prison, you fought in a gladiator arena, you got married, even invested in real estate. The variety of all of these side quests allowed the game to create smaller stories. Some funny, some sad, some boring, some great. The side quests allowed for very specific moments. Maybe being sucked into a painting and fighting your way out wasn't much of a story, but it allowed the storytellers to create a unique experience that was unlike anything else in the game. 
In your own writing, chase a side quest or two and allow yourself to tell a different kind of story within these moments. Maybe it's a breath of fresh air from your main story. Maybe it's the moment where you can get serious and write about something deep and meaningful. Dungeon Crawler Carl, the series by Matt Dineman, is fantastic at this. The series is wild. I can't even sum it up here. But in the chaos of the setting and incredible characters and dark humor and almost constant moments of danger, Matt Dineman is able to craft heartbreakingly sweet and sad moments during the side quests of his own stories. Bookended by moments of gore and conflict, the author can create a moment of tenderness between our characters Carl and his cat Donut that can genuinely bring tears to your eyes. And then we're back into the chaos of the series. The contrast between these moments only serves to highlight the effectiveness of each aspect. The tenderness makes the exciting moments that much more impactful, and the excitement makes the tenderness of these scenes that much more noticeable. Takeaways. Introduce side quests to your stories to allow the reader to experience smaller, complete stories within your novel. These moments can complement each other even if they seem wildly different from the rest of your story. Completing these side quests should be satisfying for the reader and help develop the characters and world within your story. Now I could go on and on about the lessons we could learn from video games, but I'll save that for another video. If you want more content like this, then like this video and let me know. Put some of your favorite story moments from your favorite video games below. Subscribe to the channel and join our community of writers. And as always, thank you for watching.